wait, hold on a second. How is it possible that in the space as vast as the ocean, these guys have accidentally bumped into each other? Let's sail back in time a bit. People have been embarking on sea voyages for centuries. However, at the beginning, it presented a great degree of difficulty. All this due to a missing navigational ingredient, longitude. From the times of antiquity, we were able to establish latitude by the height of the sun or known guide stars above the horizon. This allowed to sail in straight lines. Christopher Columbus, for example, followed a straight path when he sailed the Atlantic in 1492. Later on, a few narrow shipping lanes were established, promising a safe passage. These marine highways were frequented by all kinds of vessels and provided a great opportunity for pirates lurking along. Pirates were not the only danger, though. Traveling along latitude extended time of the journeys, which often resulted in disease and death. But the biggest concern was the amount of naval catastrophes. The cherry on top was in 1707, when four British warships coming back from victorious battle in Gibraltar were shipwrecked as they misgaged the longitude due to bad weather conditions. 2,000 lives were lost. Works to establish longitude have been going on for years on international level, but the Gibraltar calamity pushed the English government to sort it out once and for all. A famous Longitude Act of 1714 offered £20,000 prize to those who solved the problem. How much is 20000 you ask? About twice Mr. Darcy's income or £1 million in today's money. And so the race began. An army of astronomers had been working on so-called lunar distance method. But there was a man who claimed he can build a perfect clock and therefore sort out the problem by measuring time. A man of incredible passion and determination. A carpenter of no formal education, no apprenticeship to any watchmaker. A man of humble birth, John Harrison. To establish longitude using a timekeeping method, we need to know the precise time in two locations at home port and on the ship. It is that precision that appeared to be the most problematic. Whereas people of that era were able to tell the time quite accurately on shore, the clocks were unable to keep up with time at sea. In the era of pendulum clocks, everything had its impact. The rolling of the ship, changes in temperature, barometric pressure, even Earth's gravity from one latitude to another. Over his lifetime, Harrison constructed a series of timekeepers, gradually perfecting the design. Four of them we can still admire at the Royal Observatory in Greenwich. In 1772, James Cook takes one of Harrison's timekeepers on his second voyage on board of HMS Resolution and highly accurately maps the islands of the southern seas. He comes back three years later totally in love with the machine. In 1776, after 40 years of struggle, political intrigue, and backbiting from competition, Harrison finally receives his reward. In 